Welcome to the first topic of Section 3 of Unit 1, Common Postural Types. Before we delve into the realms of posture, we need to think very carefully. We are taught there is a normal or neutral posture, and that everyone should fit into this category. There isn't, and they don't. Here we look at what is considered normal and what is considered not. But remember, when looking at your client, just because they don't fit into the classic normal posture doesn't mean their posture is not normal for them. Never assume. Firstly, what is posture? It is defined as the attitude assumed by the body. Basically, this is how we hold ourselves consciously or unconsciously when we are sitting, standing, moving or lying. When you look at a client's posture, you want to see the unconscious posture, not the conscious held posture. We will talk about that in more detail later. Let's start with a neutral posture. This is what you would expect to see if all is well. We would expect various points of the body to be aligned. When looking for a neutral posture, you should see a neutral spine, meaning the four curves of the spine are balanced, creating an S-shape so the pressures and stresses are evenly distributed through the spine. Along with this, the following anatomy points should all line up when looking at someone from a lateral view. If you were to drop a plumb line down from the centre of the head, you would want it to go through the centre of the earlobe, the acromion process of the shoulder, the elbow, the greater trochanter of the hip, slightly anteriorly of the midline of the knee and slightly anterior of the lateral malleolus. This is your neutral standing posture, but we are not all built the same and you will see differences. Be careful not to assume because someone doesn't follow the norm that it is not their normal or neutral posture. There are many things that will change a posture, such as a job we do, sports or activities, accidents and so on. Sometimes we need to rectify the posture and other times we shouldn't. This will depend if the posture is causing an issue or not. Let's now move on to the postural issues of the spine. First we need to define a couple of terms. Kyphosis is the term used to describe the normal curvature of the thoracic spine. You may also hear the term kyphotic curve. This is an outward curve. The other term is lordosis or lordotic curve. This is the normal curvature of the lumbar spine and this is an inward curve of the spine. These curves in the spine are important as they help reduce the shock through the body. When these curves become excessive or even reduced, you may then start to get problems. These changes in curvature are a form of dysfunction. Let's have a look at the dysfunctions. You have hyperkyphosis. This is an excessive curve of the thoracic spine. This is a very common issue and can often be caused by working excessively at computers. We tend to poke our heads forward and look at the screen, creating a slumped posture. Then there is hypokyphosis. This is when you have a flattened curvature of the thoracic spine. This isn't such a common occurrence. Next up, you have hyperlordosis. Here you have an excessive curvature in the lumbar spine. And of course, hyperlordosis. Here the lumbar section is very flat. The final spinal deviation is scoliosis. This is where the spine has excessive lateral curve. This can develop at any age, so you can be born with it, or it can develop, for example, having children and then carrying them on one hip repeatedly will cause a scoliosis. The last area we're going to cover here is the pelvis. We're going to have a quick look at the pelvic tilt and rotation before we move on to common postural deviations. When we talk about the pelvic tilt, we are talking about the angle from the front to the back or the angle from the anterior superior iliac spine, ASIS, to the posterior superior iliac spine, PSIS. The pelvic tilt can be neutral, which is when the PSIS is slightly higher than the ASIS, creating or enabling the slight lordotic curve of the lumbar spine. Women are slightly more forward tilted than men. You can have an anterior pelvic tilt, 
which is quite common, where the front of the pelvis dips lower and creates a greater lordotic curve. This is the forward rotation of the pelvis, which will allow hyperlordosis. You can also have a posterior pelvic tilt, where there isn't enough forward rotation of the pelvis, which in turn creates or enables hyperlordotic lumbar curvature. Finally, you can get a pelvic rotation. This rotation comes from where the two ilia meet at the sacroiliac joint, the SIJ. There is very little movement in this joint, but a slight rotation of one or the other ilia coming forward or back can be problematic. The rotation will create stress on the SIJ and may alter movement patterns. Now we have had a basic look at neutral posture, the spine and the pelvis, you can complete the quiz for this section and then move on to common postural deviations where you will see these spinal and pelvic dysfunctions appear regularly.